you know, I had a cold open written about the design being old enough to be my dad or some weird joke like that. But this is take two of this video because I was a complete idiot and didn't plug a cable in all the way and ruined the audio. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into the review. Now, in the words of the ancients, I'm a bit of a young buck, but thanks to my love of old sci-fi, I'm familiar with the sleek lines, smooth designs, and nuclear inclinations of the late 50s and mid 60s. Today's pen is a showcase of that era. Designed in 1966, the design of the Lamy 2000 hasn't changed since its inception. Probably the only main changes have been in the body material. While the pen still features a brushed steel section, Lamy has gone from describing the rest of the body as Macrolon and now just calls it straight up fiberglass. Mine is a newer pen, so I don't know if there is a different feel between the two materials. Before we look at the pen, I will say this, um, this is technically not my first L2K. About three years ago, I temporarily owned an extra fine version of this pen, and I hated it so much that I sold it within a week and a half. So why did I buy this one? Well, times change, opinions potentially change, and do the words double broad shed some light on the situation? That's right, my attempt back with this pen, well, my first attempt back with this pen, I should say, is with a 14K nib that makes it look like you're writing with a Sharpie. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's take a look at the pen. Normally, I'd do a fancy graphic with lines and all that fun stuff, but I'm a naturally lazy person and this is take two, and I really wanna get this video out tonight for my patrons. We'll talk about that later, by the way. So for comparison, we're going to just do pictures over my left-hand shoulder. Quick disclaimer, when I give these pen measurements, they are ones that I have personally done with my own scale and calipers. Take them as guidelines, not as gospel. That said, to give us an idea on size, here is the L2K next to our trusty 1911 large. Capped, these two are pretty close to each other, with the L2K 2 grams heavier at 26 grams, and 2 millimeters shorter at 138 millimeters. Uncapped, the L2K keeps the 2 gram lead at 18 grams, but this time comes out on top in the length with a 1 millimeter lead at 124 millimeters. Now, look at those two sections. The big thing that drove me away from the L2K in the first place was that section, but we'll talk about that later. Side by side, you can see that compared to the 10 millimeter small point of the 1911 large, the five millimeter small point on the L2K section is obnoxiously small and yeah, it can be problematic. So now that we have an idea of the overall size, let's backtrack and take a look at the unboxing experience and get an overview of the pen itself. As far as boxes go, this is a pretty simple affair. The outer sleeve has Lamy on the top, company information on the front and back edges, and then nothing on the back. The inner box has Lamy on the top, followed by nothing aside from the sticker, letting me know that I am in for a wide writing experience. And opening the box, we have this small foam cube. While I'm not really sure why they went with the foam cube, it does an okay job of keeping the pen from rattling around, so yeah, that works. Under the pen pillow, we have our warranty guide. Who needs that? And underneath that, we have a mini pamphlet with company information, a quick overview of the Lamy lineup, so, in Lamy tradition, it is a simple experience that gets you and your pen writing quickly without any guilt when you either toss the box or stick it in the cupboard. Before we take a closer look at the pen, let's talk about Patreon. Aside from right now, due to a bath time boycott, my dogs normally spend most of the time that I'm working on these videos either at my feet begging for attention or attempting to fit 70 pounds of dog into my lap. Right now, that one's actually behaving, which is kind of a rare thing. Dog treats do go a long way to keeping them happy though, so I can keep making these reviews. So if you like these reviews and you wanna help make it up to the pups, click on that Patreon link down below. I know they'd appreciate it. Now calling this one a weird feeling pen is an understatement, but I definitely appreciate the sleek lines and it's not a bad feeling pen. The brushed steel on the section makes gripping it really easy. And if you grip a little further back towards the small latching strips for the pull cap, the fiberglass body has a nice feel. It's also hard to hold this pen without appreciating the manufacturing tolerances at play. Under normal lighting, simulated here with overly bright studio lights to run a nice F4 aperture, the piston is well hidden, unless you're looking right at it. 
In fact, the line on this one is only visible up close due to me letting dirt get in the last time I filled the pen, which is actually kind of odd considering how clean I keep this place. Tangents aside though, this is a very simplistic pen with great balance, a fill window that blends in perfectly to the body of the pen, and for those that feel the pen needs to be slightly longer, a really nice posting experience that leaves no marks on the body due to how the pull cap mechanism is built. It's funny, normally I find posting a pen makes it a little bit more difficult to write with, but I don't find that to be an issue here. Even with it posted, this is a nicely balanced writing experience. Speaking of which, let's take a look at that writing sample. Aside from Lamy at the top where I was literally holding the pen wrong, which by the way, that is the thing on this one. The writing experience is what I would expect for a $150 pen with a 14K gold nib. On Tomoe River, this is a smooth experience with the double broad putting out an insane amount of diamine ox blood. To put it in perspective, with this double broad, I am able to get five to seven pages of A5 paper before needing to refill the pen. If you've seen my review on ox blood, then you know that this ink has some good flow and lubrication to it. So that gives us a good look into the ink capacity at play with the L2K. Now, there is one thing with this pen that I don't run into with my other pens with more normal sections, and that is the need to keep a cloth nearby during the longer writing sessions. With the section not having a flare at the end, it is pretty easy for me to notice condensation build up on the section, and before we know it, my fingers have slipped down the pen. I'm noticing that unless I make a point to periodically dry my hands, that tends to happen around the two page mark. And yeah, that's kind of really my only negative with this pen, and if I'm gonna be honest, I feel like I'm having the stretch just to get that. When I saw this pen, I had two things in mind on my list of requirements. First, it had to be a stupidly broad nib. This has that and then some. Second, it had to be smooth out of the box. Well, yeah, it's got that going for it as well. The final stipulation was that it had to make me not regret paying the new inbox price for this pen. Well, yeah, I mean, this pen does that for me. And that's gonna do it for our look at the Lamy 2000. If you like that review or found it useful, hit that thumbs up, get subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one.